Well, in 1989, at the time, your little brother Donnell was 12 years old. He was walking on his way to school and he disappears. How long after the disappearance did you realize what was happening? I got a call from my mother that day in the evening. Like, so once my mother realized that he hadn't came home from school like he normally do, she called me to ask me, did I see him? Because sometimes he'll just stray uptown to where a mom li lived at the time and come see me or come visit or come get money, whatever. So I guess she probably would, probably was checking all corners before any panic set in. So she called me and asked, asked me, did I see him or her? No. So she said, well, he ain't get home from school yet. And I don't think no, nobody thought anything of it at the time. You just thinking he probably with a friend at a friend's house doing something he ain't got no business doing until a phone call was received. Now, once somebody called saying they had him, my mother called me back and said, somebody just called saying they got Donnell and I just came down. Okay, so now it's serious. Your mother calls you and says that someone called. And were they asking for the ransom in that first phone call? I think that they were, yeah. They said that they had him and what they wanted, yes. Which was half a million dollars. $500,000, yes. Okay, so you go to your mother's house. Does Rich meet you there as well? Rich was already there. Was already there. Was your Uncle Johnny there as well? He wasn't there at the time. Okay. He came. Well, he came. Like, everybody started gathering because now we're feeling like it's something going on. You don't receive the phone call. He's not here. It doesn't seem like somebody's playing. It doesn't seem like a game. Everything that you never thought about, like anything that you didn't know, it all unspun around and is in your face. Okay. So was it around 48 hours that there was some level of calling back and forth, like a negotiation or something leading up to the McDonald's situation? Probably 24 hours because they were being persistent. It probably was 24 hours in. And they saying that um, to go over to McDonald's to like to see how serious that they were. Like we, like somebody thought that they were playing. If you think that I'm playing, go over to McDonald's, look underneath the sink and take what's there. Okay. Who went over to McDonald's? Um, one of my brother friends. Did I go? I didn't go, I don't think. One of my brother friends, but. I remember my mother saying, like, if it's if it's a piece of him, I don't I don't wanna know. I remember my mother saying that. And when the person came back, they was talking, they was like, they was in a hallway, it was a um like a huddle in a hallway, like talking like and I go out like, oh God, I don't know what's going on, but I wanna know. And I go out there and I and I see that they they got a cup and it's a um, it's a piece like it was my little brother's finger, with his two rings. In the cup, and I just left. I just, I I I just went to the precinct after that because for a for the whole time, they was telling us not to contact. Now Johnny's here. Johnny, the whole family's here. Everybody's together now. Johnny's included. We don't think nothing, but they telling us don't contact the police. So for 24 hours, we're just trying to figure out stuff on our own, doing stuff on our own, probably going into like the 48th hour. Um, might have been shorter than that. Might not have been two days. It probably just seemed longer. But once they brought his finger, I didn't care what nobody said. I didn't care what was being done. I felt like this, we was trying for too long. It's time to get somebody involved, like bigger than us. Well, in the coffee can that they brought back from McDonald's was your little brother's finger, the two rings, but there was also a cassette tape. No, not at that time. Oh, that came later? Mm-hmm. After the police? No, were... no, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, they sent the tape with the finger and on the tape, 
he was crying. He was saying, like, he wanted help. Mommy, come help me. He said, Pat. And he said, they said, if you don't, if y'all don't give them what they want, they gonna cut off my hand. I ain't know if he said head or hand, but I, I, they, he said, they said, if you don't give us, if y'all don't give them what they want, they gonna cut off my hand. Yeah, that happened. So at that point you said, okay. Yeah, Screw I just went this. To the I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. getting the police involved. We can't, we can't, be, it's, we can't fix this. Right. We thinking it could be fixed. He, he's saying we trying to debate. Richard is saying whoever got him, probably know him because we trying to say why with Darnell? How did they get him? It's probably somebody he knew. Like we going through all kinds of scenarios trying to figure out the best of something, and was coming up with nothing. Like to the when the hand when the finger came, it was over. Like I just went to the precinct. Right. And your uncle, who's right there, he was trying to stop you from going to the precinct. He was like, nah, don't they said don't go to the precinct. Why you won't go to the precinct? They telling you don't go to the precinct. I'm like, there's nothing else we could do. Like they they cutting on him, like, no. No, and I'll never forget I put on I put on his um because I felt like they was watching us, but I'm thinking it's somebody outside watching us, like, because they were talking about certain things, like we know that y'all, like we know that oh no, this was after. But while he's there, we just I just left, but I said, let me put on Donnell coat, let me put on his hat. I tried to dress up like a little boy because I didn't want to be recognized going out the building if they was watching. Well, how did the police take it? when you? So you personally went to the police and filed a report? Mm-hmm. How did the police react? They didn't take it seriously, I don't think, for me. I don't think they took it seriously. They told um, my mother, don't answer the phone, and like, um, once, once I'm, once I'm showing, like, this is what's going on. I give them the cup. They see that something is going on. Now they, they, they awoke. Now everybody's trying to put a scenario together, I guess. But what ends up happening is they tell my mother, don't answer the phone. I think that's what messed it up right there. Like, I, I just don't understand why they told her don't answer the phone. Like, her child is missing, been missing. Every time these people call, we pick up the phone. We talking to them. We trying to negotiate things. We trying to say, give us time, stuff like that. And then for as long as it took them to come in and put a tap on my mother's line, we had not answered the phone. Were they calling, you think? Yeah. Okay, so the phone, the phone just ringing, kept ringing and ringing and you guys but didn't But we were answer. told, don't answer the phone. Okay, did the feds get involved? Yeah. Okay, so now this is being escalated to a serious, mm-hmm. I mean, we have a serious kidnapping of a child now. Of a child. Okay. 12 years old. 